Hello everyone, I am Akhilesh Kumar Shivasto from ABS Engineering College, Ghaziabad. In the series of operating system lectures, we have discussed about the memory management part on the last term. In last few lectures, we have discussed the memory management in detail. We have also seen that the hard disk has to play a very important role because the virtual address space is created just because of the hard disk. A portion of the hard disk is selected as a huge memory space which is supporting for the page replacements. Whenever we have a data to store there in the hard disk space, the mass storage management comes to the place. The data stored in the hard disk should be very efficiently stored such that the access time is least. Whenever we get a raw hard disk, we cannot store the data there directly. We will have to do some kind of the arrangement before storing the data physically on the hard disk. Usually, the hard disk space is divided into various small small blocks and we store the data in those blocks. So, in today's lecture, we will see that how the division of the physical hard disk space is done and what are the different times related to the hard disk. So, the outline of the lecture will be, we will first discuss this disk structure, then we will see the various times related to the disk axis and then we will solve some numericals. So, this is actually the diagram of a hard disk or internal diagram of a hard disk. In the, in every hard disk, there are the spin, there are the platters. Platters means these are the plates and on these plates the data is stored. So, these are the plates where the data is stored. Usually the data is stored on both the surfaces. The data is stored on top and the data is stored on the bottom as well. In some of the hard disks, the topmost surface and the bottom most surface is not usable. Otherwise, all the surfaces are usable and we can store the data. So, let us say we have the 10 platters, then the total number of surfaces will be 20 and out of the 20, it may happen so that only 18 are usable and the other two may not be usable. This hard disk platters are connected to a cylindrical structure, this is the cylindrical structure which is known as the spindle. The spindle is the shaft on which all the platters are arranged or all the platters are fixed and this spindle moves. This spindle moves continuously and the usual speed of the movement of the spindle is 3600 revolution per minute or 5400 revolution per minute. Obviously, when the spindle will move, the platters will also move. So, the platters are in the continuous movement whenever we are dealing with a system. There is a disk arm and this arm is connecting the various heads for all the surfaces. So, there is one head for each surface. So, if we have 20 usable surfaces, then there will be 20 read write heads and these read write heads usually move in and out continuously. Now, all these, these hard disk heads or the read write heads are connected to the arm assembly. The speed of the movement of the disk arm or the read write head is same for all the surface heads. So, the surface heads have the same in and out speed or they move all together. It means if you number these disk arms or the read write heads from 1 to 6, then the speed at which 1 is moving with this the same speed the 2 will be moving and 3 will be moving at the same speed and 4 will also be moving at the same speed. So, there are platters, there are surfaces on which the data is stored. There is a read write head which is responsible for uh, covering the data or reading the data and writing the data on the hard disk surfaces. 
the spindle is there on which all the platters are connected and the spindle moves with certain speed. Obviously, the disc platters will also be moving at the same speed. Now, you must have heard about the concept of the formatting or you must certainly have heard about the term formatting. So, the term formatting means to make the hard disk usable, to divide the hard disk space in some usable areas. For example, if we if this is a surface of a hard disk, then the as a as a part of the formatting, we will be dividing this space into the concentric circles. And these concentric circles are called the tracks. So, there are multiple tracks on the same surface. All these uh, cylinder all these sectors or all these tracks will further be divided into the small small chunks and this these chunks are known as the surf, uh, sectors. So, there are tracks and there are the sectors. So, on each of the track there will be sectors. The usual size of the sector is 512 bytes. This is a standard size and in between the two sectors there is a gap, there is a small gap and this is known as the intersector gap. So, for all the surfaces this kind of the division or the logical division takes place in the hard disk as a part of the formatting process. In case we see that every sect every track is divided into the equal size sectors, then you will see that the each of the sector is storing the fixed amount of data. Meaning that if there is a circle and we make other circles inside this, the circles coming inside the region will have the less circumference and if the sectors are storing the same amount of the data and that is decided as 512 bytes. So, this chunk will have large area to store 512 bytes and the inner wall will have less storage space for or less space for storing the 512 bytes of the data. It means that the density of the data is less on the outer, sur outer surfaces and the density of the data is high when you move inside this in, inside the tracks. Okay? So, density of the data is high when you move inside the track and when you move out of the tracks then the outermost tracks will have less data density. Now, we have the sector numbering or the division of the sectors for each of the surface. And if it is for the each of the surface, it means that if we number these tracks, let us say the, the numbers are from 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and so forth. So, there will be 0, 1, 2, 3 track number for the other surface as well and similarly for the other surface as well. So, for all the surfaces we are doing this kind of the numbering. So, if we connect with a dotted line all the tracks with number 3. So, this will be forming a virtual cylinder, this will be forming a cylinder like this. So, track number 3 of all the surfaces are forming a virtual cylinder and data stored on the hard disk is done cylindrically. What is the meaning of the cylindrical data storage? There are the disk arms for all the surfaces and these disk arms will lie at the same track at the same time. So, we can store the data in parallel in all these surfaces. I again repeat, I can store lot of data on these surfaces at the same time because in parallel we can store all these data because the disk arm or read write head will be at one of the surface at one time. Similarly, the track number 2 of all the surfaces will form again a cylinder. Similarly, track number 1 of all the surfaces will form again a cylinder. 
So, all these surfaces, all these tracks are forming the virtual cylinders and the data storage takes place on these cylinders simultaneously or you can say in parallel. You can take this with an example, let us say the track capacity is 2 MB, 2 megabyte. The number of surfaces are let us say 40, there are total 40 surfaces. So, here you can store 40 into 2 MB, it means 80 MB of data at the same time or you can say that in parallel you can store 80 MB of data. So, this again is a diagram of the cylinder. The track number X of all the platters, all the surfaces are forming a virtual cylinder. Okay. This again is a spindle as I already told you and this spindle will move, this spindle will move either at the rate of 3600 rpm or 5400 rpm. These are the platters, it means the plates at which the data will be stored. Now, if you are going to access the data item from the hard disk, then we will have to decide various times related to that. So, all those times are listed out here, the seek time, there is a read write head and the read write head will have to come in connect with a particular track. So, let us say the read write head comes in the connect of a particular track in some say S time. So, this time is known as the seek time or in other words, you can say that the seek time is the time to locate the desired track by the read write head. So, wherever the read write head is currently, to reach to the desired track number, the read write head will have to move. So, during the process of the movement, the amount of time required for the read write head to come to the particular track will be known as the seek time. Similarly, the rotational latency mean the disk is moving or the disk surfaces are moving, continuously moving. So, when the read write head has come at a particular track, the track will be moving, the track will be moving and your desired data may be somewhere other than where the head is currently. So, when the disk will move, it will come in touch with the read write head. So, the amount of time required for the particular sector or the desired sector to come in touch with the read write head is known as the rotational latency. So, it can also be seen that seen as how much time is required to locate to the required sector number. Similarly, the transfer rate is amount of time required or a rate at which the data is read from the hard disk device and sent to the main memory. So, this actually is the transfer rate. So, the total time for accessing the data from the hard disk will be seek time means to locate a track, rotational latency means to locate a sector and the transfer time or transfer rate it means the amount of time required for the data item to be transferred to the main memory whenever required. Now, let us solve a numerical and try to understand the seek time, rotational density and the other things. So, the question is saying what is the average access time for transferring 512 bytes of data with the following specification. The average seek time is 5 millisecond, it means the time required for the read write head to the come in, con in contact with the track or the desired track will be 5 millisecond disk is rotating at 6000 revolution per minute. We will have to find out the rotational latency with this and the data rate or the data transfer rate is 40 kilobyte per second and the controller overhead is 0.1 millisecond. So, all other things seem to be known except the rotational latency. So, it is assumed that when the disk is moving on an average it takes half a rotation to reach to the particular sector. So, we will have to find out 
how much time is required for the half rotation okay so now it is said that the 600 revolution per minute is the speed of the disk so 6000 not 600 6000 revolutions do take place in 1 minute you can also say that it is equals to 60 second then one revolution will take place in 60 upon 6000 seconds and half revolution will take place in 60 upon 6000 into 1 by 2 so if we cancel out the 6 this is 1 upon 100 into 1 upon 2 okay so you can say that this is 0.5 upon 100 seconds if you want to find out the millisecond you will have to multiply it with 1000 so if you multiply this with 1000 this becomes millisecond so 50 or sorry 5 millisecond is the rotational latency so with the given specification we have found that seek time is 5 millisecond and the rotational latency is also 5 millisecond let's try to find out other parameters as well so the other parameters will be other parameter that we have to find is the how much time is required for the data transfer it is said that we have to transfer 512 bytes of data and the data transfer rate is 40 kilobyte per second so 40 kilobyte is transferred in 1 second or in other words you can say that 40 into 1024 bytes does get transfer in 1 second so 512 bytes of data will be transferred in 1 upon 40 into 1024 multiplied with 512 okay so this is 1 by 80 so 1 by 80 is the total transfer time required for transferring of 512 bytes of data since we are finding out the other parameters in the millisecond let's try to find out this parameter also in the millisecond so if you multiply this with 1000 this will get converted to the millisecond so this will be 100 upon 8 so the data transfer rate is 100 upon 8 or you can say that this is 12.5 milliseconds so the total time required would be seek time plus rotational latency plus transfer time so seek time is 5 millisecond rotational latency is also 5 millisecond and the transfer time is 12.5 millisecond so all together this comes out to 22.5 milliseconds so 22.5 millisecond is required for the transfer of the data from the hard disk to the main memory so the amount of data which is required to be transferred is 512 bytes so what we have learned from here that whenever the rotational latency is not given we should consider that half a rotation will take place to locate to the desired sector and in case we have been given the revolution time or the disk revolution speed we can easily find out how much time it will take for half a revolution let's take another example this example is saying that what is the average access time for transferring 512 bytes of data with the following specification so average seek time here is given as 15 millisecond the disk rotation speed is 3600 revolution per minute and the data transfer rate is 100 kilobyte per second so we know what is the seek time seek time is already given as 15 millisecond we need to find out the rotational latency so just now we have said that we have to find out the time for half a revolution so we know that 3600 revolutions do take place in 1 minute meaning that in 60 seconds so one revolution will take place in 60 upon 3600 seconds so if we cancel this out this is 1 upon 60 seconds if we need to convert this to the millisecond we will have to multiply this with the 1000 so this is the time required for one revolution what we have to find we have to find it for the half a revolution so half a revolution will take place in 1000 upon 60 into 1 by 2 so if you cancel this out this is 100 by 12 or further if you reduce it with this will be 50 by 
six milliseconds, or even further twenty five by three millisecond. So this is the time for the half a revolution. So twenty five by three. This actually is the rotational latency for the given specification. This is also known that the hundred kilobytes of the data will be transferred in one second. So obviously, hundred means hundred into one zero two four bytes. Data can be transferred in one second. So one byte of data can be transferred in one upon hundred into one zero two four seconds. Now we have to transfer five hundred twelve bytes. So five hundred and twelve bytes of data can be transferred in one upon hundred into one zero two four. Into five one two, so this cancels out, and this is one upon two hundred seconds. If we have to convert this to the millisecond, we will have to multiply this with thousand, and this will be five milliseconds. So we have found all the times related to this. We have found seek time, which is fifteen. We have found the rotational latency, which is twenty-five by three. and then we have found the transfer time also which is 5 millisecond so if we just solve this this will be 15 plus 25 sorry this will be 45 plus 25 plus 15 upon 3 meaning that 85 by 3 millisecond so 85 by 3 millisecond is the time required for transfer of 512 bytes data from the hard disk Now let's take another example, and uh, let's solve this for finding out various other parameters as well. Here it is said that the consider a disk pack with the following specifications. There are sixteen surfaces. Total number of surfaces are sixteen. One twenty-eight tracks per surface. So there are one twenty-eight tracks on one surface. So if we want to find out how many total surfaces or how many total uh tracks will be there in the entire disk so 16 is the total number of surfaces on each of the surface there are 128 tracks now there are 256 sectors per tracks on one sector there are 256 tracks so we already have a have a specification of how many total number of tracks are there in each of the track there are 256 sector so if you multiply number of tracks with the number of sectors so this comes out to be as the total number of sectors present in the hard disk so this may perhaps be telling you the how this will this may perhaps be telling you the capacity of the disk just one parameter that is the 512 bytes per sector is getting stored meaning that 512 is multiplied as the size of the each of the sector we already have found the number of the sectors earlier so this is the total capacity of the disk if we represent each of these in the powers of 2 so the parameter comes out to 4 plus 7 11 and 28 so 2 raised to the power 28 is the total size of the hard disk it means the size of the hard disk is 256 megabyte how would be how did we find this this can be represented as 2 raised to 8 into 2 raised to the power 20 2 to the power 8 means 256 and 2 raised to the power 20 means 1 megabyte so the disk capacity is 256 megabyte so we have found the answer to the first question the second question says that what is the number of bits required to to address the sector so this is very easy to find out this is asking you that we are num we have numbered the sectors from 0 onwards if you if you can find out how many total number of sectors are there then you can find out the total number of bits required to address to the sector for example here the total number of sectors is this much we already have found like this 16 surfaces on each surface 128 tracks and 256 sectors so total number of sectors are 16 into 128 into 256 if we find out or if we do some kind of the computation so this will be 2 raised to the power 4 
into 2 raised to the power 7 into 2 raised to the power 8. So, this is equals to 2 raised to the power 19. So, to address to 2 raised to the power 19 sectors, we required the address of 19 bits. This we have discussed thoroughly when we were discussing the memory management that if let us say we have 4 different slots to address. So, the number of bits for the address of these 4 slots will be 2 bits. The address of the first slot will be 0, 0, address of the next slot will be 0, 1, then 1, 0 and finally 1, 1. So, these will be the 4 slots and we have found the addresses of these slots. Similarly, if we have 2 raised to the power 19 different slots, to address to one of these slots, we will require 19 bits. So, we have found the answer of this one. Now, here it is said that if the format overhead is 32 bytes per sector, what is the formatted disk space? It means that when we are formatting the disk, we have already seen that in the first slide that whenever we are formatting, there is an intersector gap. So, when you are formatting, the, the, that gap is maintained between each of the sector. So, that gap is actually the wastage of the memory. We cannot make the utilization of that space. So, out of the sector space of 512 bytes, 32 bytes are unusable. We cannot use 32 bytes. So, what we will be done that in each of the sector, we will be using 512 minus 32 bytes. It means this will be equals to 480. So, rather than multiplying the number of sectors with 512, we will be multiplying number of sectors with 480. So, it means the disk capacity or formatted disk capacity will be 2 raised to the power 19 multiplied with 480. So, whatever it comes out to this is the bytes or in other words you can represent this as uh, 240 megabyte. You just take 2 in the powers of 2 remaining will be 240. So, 240 megabyte is the capacity of the formatted disk space. Now, another question it is asking if the format overhead is 64 bytes per sector, how much amount of memory is lost due to formatting? So, in the earlier question it was asked that, in the earlier question it was asked that what is the disk capacity usable and here it is asking that how much wastage has actually taken place. So, you already have the number of the sectors, you, have, you multiply the number of sectors with the format overhead. So, the number of sectors are 2 raised to the power 19. So, you multiply 64 with this. So, it means this much is the wastage of memory. So, the, the wastage of memory in totality will be 32 megabyte. You take 2 out here and 32 megabyte is the total capacity. Similarly, you can find out other parameters also in this question. So, to, in today's lecture what we have learned that we have the logical blocks and those logical blocks are mapped into sectors. So, we can consider that we have a one dimensional array which is containing lot of data and those data are mapped to the sector. Fine, we have seen that the disk is arranged into the or logical form of the cylinder or the tracks are or the same number of tracks are considered as the logical cylinders and the data is stored cylindrically. In the next lecture, we will see that what are the different disk scheduling algorithms.